Let us now talk about the second phase of plant development. First phase was germination where the vegetative growth takes place and the second is the reproductive phase. Which can also be termed as the phase when the plants are going to produce flowers. So this is also known as the flowering phase. Now the conditions which are required for this reproduction to take place or for flowering to take place are known as inductive conditions. Inductive conditions are those which are essential for flowering to take place. So these are conditions required for flowering. Now in this there are two main things which are essential for flowering to take place. One is photo period and second is temperature and here we are not talking about optimum temperature which is required for enzymatic activity. We are talking about low temperature which is known as vernalization. So there is requirement of low temperature and this requirement of the plant to produce flowers is known as vernalization. So these are the two main conditions or we can say these are the inductive conditions which are required by the plants for flowering in their reproductive period. So let us first start with the photo period. Now when we say photo period, it is the duration of light or day which is required. So duration of light. So when we are actually talking about photo period, the factor which is essential is light and specifically the duration of this light. On the basis of what duration is required, we classify the plants into three categories. The first are called long day plants. The second short day plants and third are day neutral plants. What is meant by these terms which are given to these plants? Long day plants are the ones which would require longer photo period. This is what is uh, understood by the term. Once we take the examples, then we will realize what exactly is needed. Short day plants means a shorter duration of photo period or daytime is required. And day neutral means the plants, they, they are not specific about any duration of light. And they flower whatever uh, photo period is available to them. So on the basis of requirement of light period or photo period, we classify them into three categories. And we will take all three separately to understand what exactly is that factor which is helping that particular category of plant to produce flowers. So let us start with the first that is long day plants. Now let us see the long day plants and what happens when they are given those conditions. Let us first write down the examples of these long day plants. Spinach, raffinus. These are the most important examples. Now let us take a situation when these long day plants are exposed to duration of light and dark phases. We are talking of long day plant. So this highlighted portion is the night and this other portion is the day duration. So from this it is clearly visible that we are giving a longer photo period to the plant and a shorter night period. Now in this situation the long day plant should flower and 
the flowering is seen. In experimental conditions, if we perform few changes, then let us see what exactly happens in this case. Suppose we reverse the situation. Short day is given and a long night period is given. Which doesn't fit into this name which has been given to the plant. If this plant produces flowers, then the day duration is long. In this situation, obviously, there would be no flowering. Flowering would take place and here there is no flowering. If we perform one more experimental situation or provide some experimental situation to the plant, give it a short day and interrupt the night period with a zone of light. So suppose here there is a little half an hour duration when the plant is exposed to light. That means we have broken this long night period into two short dark phases and there is an interruption of light. In this situation also there is no flowering. So what is concluded by these experimental things is that long day plants require a long day duration. That means they are sensitive to long day. Only when these long days are provided then only flowering would take place. Now what exactly is happening when this light is being provided? Flowering in plant is also a phytochrome dependent process and we have seen that this phytochrome exists in two forms PR and PFR and these are interconvertible that means one changes into the other. PR absorbs red wavelength and changes into PFR. This happens during daytime. And the reverse takes place during night when far red is absorbed and it changes into PR. Now what is happening? Suppose we start with the amount of PR here. During daytime, PR is going to absorb red wavelength and it will change into PFR. That means if duration of day is long, more quantity of PFR would get accumulated and short night period or dark period would change little amount of PFR into PR. That means there would be substantial quantity of PFR which would still remain and that is going to initiate flowering. In the other situation, the scene is going to be different from this. Let us start with the same. PR, day duration is less, so PFR will be produced, but the amount of PFR here and here, they are going to be different. In longer day period, more PFR is produced. In shorter day period, less PFR is produced. And then this is followed by a long phase of darkness in which this PFR would change into PR. So here concentration of PR is going to be more as compared to PFR. So what is required by the long day plants is actually a long day so that the concentration of PFR can be maintained high which is going to initiate flowering. So this is seen in case of long day plants. The second one are short day plants. Short day plants. In this we can take the examples of xanthium, then tobacco variety, nicotiana, tobacco. These are important examples of short day plants. Now let us see the same kind of situations for the short day plant. Suppose a short day plant is exposed to what its name says or what this term says. Short duration of day, 
and a long in uninterrupted dark phase. So this is the dark phase and this is the light phase. Now from this it becomes very clear that what plant requires is a short duration of day and a long uninterrupted night. So here it should produce flowering and it does produce flowering. We are going to change the situation now and these are all experimental uh, situations which have been tried on these plants. Suppose we reverse it. We provide a long light period that is photo period and a short dark period. Then in this because it is just opposite of what is the requirement then in this case there is no flowering. Scientists performed one more experiment with these plants. They provided a long day and this dark period was interrupted by a light period. So photo period was more that is long. So long photo period was there and the dark was interrupted with light. This is again not the condition which is required by the plant. So here also no flowering. One more experiment was done. Exactly same as what is required by the plant. The long night or dark phase was interrupted with light. So exactly same. What is the term given to the plant? This, this category of plants they require according to the name. Short day and obviously if the day duration is less, the night period is going to be longer. So here the day duration is short. So this is the light period. And long dark period was provided where there is a little interruption with the light. Now what comes to our mind is this plant is a short day plant and we are providing a short photo period so it should produce flowers but when scientists did this situation or provided this situation there was no flowering now this came as a surprise because what term was given to the plant was a short day plant so when day duration is short it was producing flowers same situation, day duration was kept as short, but that night period or that dark period was interrupted with light period. And here there was no flowering. So scientists concluded that short day plants are actually sensitive to the dark period. For them to flower, it is the night period or dark period which is critical. In this case we saw it was the day duration which was deciding the flowering of these plants. But in short day plants, if it was just simple short day, in this situation also it should have flowered. But it did not. Reason was that for short day plants, the dark phase is critical. That means for flowering to take place, they require a long uninterrupted dark period. But then why are we calling it a short day plant? We should be calling it a long night plant. See our factor when we say uh, for flowering, the factor was light. And when light is the factor, we have to give the term using that factor. And we will talk about that substance which is responsible for perception of light. There is nothing which is actually perceiving darkness. So darkness is not a factor. So the name has been given on the basis of factor that is light. But in case of short day plants, it is the dark period which is critical, not the day duration. And in case of the long day plants, it is the day duration which is critical. So 
by these experiments scientists have concluded that either it is the long day which is required then we call it long day plants or it is the short day but the critical thing is the long duration of dark days in case of short day plants the third category of plants they are day neutral plants.